Hey everyone, how are you doing today? It's Deligracy here, obviously. And welcome to the next part of Hampton Falls in The Sims 4. I am so excited to be recording. I hope you guys have had a nice weekend or start to the week or end to the week. Whenever you're watching this, I hope you're having a nice time and relaxing. Anyway, in the last part of this, a lot happened. So make sure to give the video a big thumbs up and comment down below what you want to happen next. Please subscribe if you haven't already because we love the growing fam. We like to keep the family big and large. A lot happened in the last part. Esther gave birth to her baby boy who is so cute and adorable. I'm really excited about that. We also held a vote whether the baby would be put up for adoption or not. Terry was dressing up um, when the baby was born, which was during the night. He was dressing up as, uh, well, in women's clothes because he is soon going to be identified as Tanya instead of Terry. So he is transitioning to becoming a woman and or identifying as a woman. Another super cute thing happened. Ajax, who we have I haven't actually spent a lot of time on. He went over to Lauren's house to basically just see how she was going after being cyberbullied and he just wanted to tell her that he can be a friend that he's there for her if she ever needs anything because he's been an outcast his whole life and she's kind of an outcast now so the outcasts came together and I'm shipping them so hard and so are so many of you guys. Anyway let's not wait another second and let's get into it. Cheers! All right, so I am at the Lockwoods mansion and currently uh, the storyline for Larissa is that she obviously divorced her husband because he left her or was in the middle of divorcing her husband. Uh, he moved on super quickly and proposed to Morgan and now he's kind of having, probably having a meltdown because Morgan's now in jail. The woman he left his wife for murdered someone. He's now stuck with three triplets that are not his, even though he doesn't know that yet. Like he's having a complete mess of time. Whereas Larissa, even though, you know, her husband cheated on her and kind of left her for another woman, at least she's kind of doing okay. She got the house. She got everything. And she now has a male who wants to marry her, who is Tadashi Mikatani. They're both Sims who like to um, have good status in a town. They want to marry well. And that suits both of them to, um, you know, spend the rest of their lives together. So she just needs to finalize all of the divorce papers. So she's going to be going over to the Ortega family, over to their house, um, because Mr. Ortega is going to be her lawyer. I've been wanting to play with the Ortegas for ages and you guys have as well. I did give them all new seasonal outfits so they now do have winter and summer outfits so they won't be looking like weirdos in like crazy clothes so that is good and well. Now let's go check out the Ortegas house and see if Mr. Ortega can help finalize our divorce documents. Um, so she's just going to call into his house and have kind of a consultation there. Oh my gosh invite Morgan Monk. I don't think so. <gasps> you guys! Blaine, so tragic. We are going to go over here and knock on the door. There is a heat wave going on right now, so we want to be inside anyway because it's very, very hot. Larissa is wearing one of her new uh, summer outfits, which you'll see in a se second. And this is the second last day of summer, you guys. So um, I don't know if there's anything on the calendar for the end of summer. Is there heat wave. Uh, I don't think there is anything actually until Harvest Fest. So um, nothing too crazy going on, but we're going to make some crazy things happen. So we're knocking on the Ortega household. I guess sometimes, usually you would probably see the Ortegas at the Ortega law office or whatever. Um, but I think because Larissa is such a high profile client that she can just come over to their house and be like, hi, I'm Larissa. I'm going to pay you a lot of money to divorce my husband who ran away with another woman and make sure that I get everything. What are you feeding us? Chicken nuggets? Um, Philippe, we do not want the chicken nuggets. All right, we are now in Philippe's office. This is a little bit more professional than um, than the kitchen was eating chicken nuggets. And Larissa is pretty much just talking to him saying, now I want everything. I want to make sure the kids and I get all assets, all of our properties. I want him left with absolutely nothing because he left us and he doesn't deserve anything that we have. Can you do that for me and make sure it happens? Oh, Flip's song, like, of course, I am a top litigator, lawyer, whatever you want to call them. I don't know the lingo. But he's like the top man and he's like, not a problem, Larissa. I will make sure that everything runs smoothly. Larissa is like, thank you, Philippe. Basically, 
probably every family in this Let's Play has a few issues. Like no family is perfect in this Let's Play, except probably the Davenports and the Mikitanis, okay? They're pretty close to perfect, but the Mikitanis were probably, you know, introducing Larissa into the mix. Something's gonna go wrong, probably. So naturally, the Ortegas need to have their problems as well. And their problem is they are not as they seem. I mean, Mrs. Ortega, Ortega, she wears diamonds and beautiful jewelry or pearls or what have you. She's very well made up and they live in this beautiful like Spanish home, but they actually have like no money. They are constantly in debt to, to some bad business decisions they made a long time ago. So they are living a life that they can't afford to live and they don't want to give that up. So basically, Philippia is trying to pay off as much as he can by getting any lawyer work he can, but um, it's not enough right now. So these guys, even though they're very much in love together, they need to figure this out. I'm going to take Philippe over to Mr. Lockwood's uh, residence right now because he is going to have to go to Mr. Lockwood's and deliver the divorce papers. We have now switched over to Mr. Lockwood's house because uh, Philippe Ortega is going to speak to him um, about the divorce papers or deliver the divorce papers, whatever, um, which he has agreed to sign. So he's just walked into the house because no one actually answered the door. And as it turns out, this house is pretty trashed. Like there's some pretty weird things going on in the kitchen. Um, alcohol bottles left around the place. The lounge room is a mess. Alcohol bottles around everywhere in there. Clearly this is an unstable home and Lauren and her brother are the only ones here taking care of all three babies. So what I'm actually going to do is get um, Mr. Ortega to call up Mr. Lockwood's attorney and ask what the hell is going on. Um, and basically the attorney has said that Mr. Lockwood um, is not fit to look after the kids. Social services has been in contact with him and the kids will be going up for adoption soon um, because clearly the household is not suitable for them or their lifestyle. Mr. Ortega is like, oh my God, are you serious? This house is so sad, man. That's so sad. This guy is just clearly lost the plot and can't take care of himself, let alone these three kids. Mr. Lockwood has also agreed to the terms of the divorce uh, set forth by Larissa and he has realized he has not, he has no defense. He's mentally unstable right now. Uh, he can't look after these three newborns. So it's all a little bit crazy and up in the air and he has agreed to leave town and um, not see his kids anymore, uh, which Larissa stated in their divorce settlement as well. So that's pretty sad. So before he leaves, he's just saying hello to Lauren. He knows that Lauren has been a good friend of his daughter Astrid's and is just making sure that she has plans um, for where she's gonna live now that there's no adult with her. And he's like, you let me know if you, if you have any trouble with anything. And she's like, thank you so much, Philippe. It really means a lot, uh, but hopefully I have everything sorted. So, of course, that's not Philippe's job to look after her, but he's just kind of being a nice guy and checking in that everything's going okay with her. Now that he's back home, I thought it would be nice if he says hello to his own daughter and being around dysfunctional families, he's kind of appreciating what he does have at home. So he's speaking to Astrid and Astrid's like, please dad, can you please buy me the new handbag? It's so pretty and none of the other girls have it yet. He's like, oh, all right, sweetie, just, just put it on the family credit card. Daddy, that credit card stopped working like two weeks ago. Don't forget to top it up, okay? He's a little stressed right now. Now that Mr. Ortega has been home for a little while and it is the evening, he is checking his emails. And it looks like there's an interesting email that's popped up from the women's jail where Morgan is being held. And apparently she's very unhappy with what is happening with her children. She doesn't really know who to reach out to. She doesn't really have anyone there to support her, but she has requested that Mr. Ortega come and visit her because she believes it is in his best interest. So he's probably thinking, why would I go and visit her. She's not my problem at all. But at the same time, Morgan is a clever woman and she says she has something that might be useful for him and have some value to him. Mr. Ortega is probably like telling his wife, oh my gosh, you'll never believe it. Morgan wants me to go visit her in jail. The poor woman's so desperate. She has no one representing her. Why would I go all the way to the jail to speak to her? What is she thinking? 
Mrs. Ortega is a little bit switched on and she said, well, honey, maybe maybe there's actually something in this. Maybe she has some important information. I'll be like, honey, I think it's worth going out to the jail in case there's something else that she knows. Who knows? Maybe, maybe she has an alibi or something that could actually make us a lot of money and give you a lot of work. Who knows where it can lead? Just go speak to her, okay? For the family. It's like, all right, I'll go speak to her, but she is a crazy woman. I don't think there's going to be much there that's worth to us. All right, it is now the morning and I have swapped over to the Harris household where our brand new little Bambino is, as well as Tanya and Allison and Esther. Um, basically, Allison and Esther, since the drama of having the baby, um, you know, Allison's really calmed down a lot and she's um, agreed that the baby will stay with them and Esther's going to bring up the baby within the family home, which is really exciting. Um, and Allison is going to fully support her. So that is pretty awesome. Esther's always been her mom's little angel and she's really got her head around the fact that she's a young mom. Also, I did give the entire family seasonal makeovers. So uh, Terry here, who I will now refer to as Tanya, um, she has either got a hair transplant or she's wrapping a wig um bit by bit she's going to transition fully into a more um womanly dress sense and aesthetic we're going to incorporate those phenom pieces bit by bit she doesn't want it to be too much of a shock to the family she wants family to get used to it bit by bit as well allison's uh having a little bit of a chat to tanya saying i see you've got new hair um are you sure that's a good idea do you think people might notice something's a little bit different tanya's like Allison, we both threw that for a long time. My identity has been transitioning to female and you haven't want, wanted to acknowledge it and you haven't wanted it to happen, but it is happening and this is the start of it. And I'll make it gradual and I'll work it into our lifestyle bit by bit, but I am transitioning and we are going to have to talk to the family about it. Okay. And Esther's like, Dad, what is with the hair? Esther's pretty naive. She still doesn't get what's going on. She's like, Mom, why has Dad got weird hair? Allison really doesn't know what to say right now. She's like, uh, Terry, you tell her. <laughs> Esther's just kind of walked away. Uh, Terry's like, I'll go speak to her up in her room. I know you're embarrassed by my hair, but this is a change and there's going to be a few different changes um, to my appearance, but I love you very much. And we're going to be talking about these changes with a family counselor soon. Don't you worry about it right now. Worry about you being a new mom. And I think Esther's a little bit confused, but she's so overwhelmed with having a kid that she's like, oh, like quickly distracted by other things. She's probably like, okay, dad, whatever. I'm happy to go speak to someone about whatever's going on for you. No problem. And this baby is driving me crazy. So I'm glad Allison is changing um, the dirty diaper. Sable has been sprayed by a skunk. Gross, that lingering smell should go away eventually. Ew. Feeding her little grandson. I've forgotten the grandson's name. What did we name him? Milo, feeding little Milo. Anyway, I think what would be cute is if we actually um, set up like a family dinner tonight. Um, so the rest of the siblings, Joel and Crystal can actually meet their nephew. So let's go down here to the calendar and add an event. I love that we can now plan events ahead of times uh, with the Sims 4 Seasons update. So we are going to do a dinner party. Um, we are going to be inviting... Oh, sorry, we're going to be hosting it with Allison, and then we are going to invite just the family over. So we'll invite Crystal, we'll invite Joel, definitely not Morgan. <laughs> uh, I don't think that will be appropriate. Just the family, and I don't think we need a caterer. Um, we'll do some cooking in the kitchen. Actually, you know what? Let's get a cake. Let's get a caterer. Let's be extra. Let's be extra. Um, and they're going to have it in their house. I think we'll do it at six o'clock. So we should probably start getting cooking. You know what? I'm not really sure why I did dinner. Why aren't we having just like a late lunch? Oh, well, I will speed ahead until dinner time and then the whole family can come over and meet little Milo. Yay, dinner party starts soon. Okay, location. It's a good. <laughs> it's a good. 
Okay, so our dinner party is starting very, very soon. So I know we got a caterer, but I'm always worried that the caterer is never going to like do what they're meant to do. So I'm going to make a grand dinner. I think we'll have to do a tofurkey dinner because I'm pretty sure from memory, Esther is vegetarian. Yeah, she is. So um, she probably doesn't want that. Bianca, I hear the festival t-shirts are out of this world. Let's go to the festival and buy one. Um, no, Bianca, we have a family family dinner. So let's get, um, let's get Allison to cook that up. Mm. Isn't it amazing how this little bowl of like tomato soup is going to become a grand meal? Like how is that for fast cooking? Oh, she's just changed into a beautiful dinner party outfit. All right, well, she's busy in the kitchen. Everyone should be arriving right about now. So let's see, where where is the family at? I don't see them. And it looks like Allison has made this delicious tofurkey dinner. So what I might do is we don't really need this many seats. We've got Tanya, Allison, and then the three kids. So I think we'll move that and just have, and I think I'll delete these chairs because I feel like they're gonna sit at the bench instead of at the table, which is what we don't want to happen. So let's get them all to come to the meal. Actually not grab a serving. I should be saying call to meal. Call to grand meal, please. She should ring her little bell. Oh, Allison's looking so cute. She's like, kids, come and get it. Um, oh, and look, Crystal's here. She looks so cute in her like little short shorts. Joel is here, Tanya is here. Um, they're probably a little bit confused with the hairdo, but that's okay. And they are all coming to sit down for a family dinner, which is really exciting. And I'm actually going to bring down little Milo as well. So this is to celebrate Milo's birth and we're going to be aging Milo up to a toddler as well. So yay for a new little family member growing up. Um, so we'll just put Milo there. Uh oh, oh my gosh, what just happened? You guys, maybe they're just too excited right now to eat and you know what that's fair enough maybe us is like come on I just want to show you guys the baby okay so let's go show off to um, Crystal and then we'll show Joel so let's go over here ladies um, and I also did give her just a little bit of a tummy because I thought um, after giving birth it was realistic to have her have a bit of a tummy and a bit more of a bust as well oh my gosh she's like ew what is this turkey <laughs> So Esther's showing Crystal little Milo and Crystal's like, oh my gosh, he is beautiful, Esther. Aww. And now she's also showing him to Joel. He looks so unhappy. <laughs> but Joel's like, whoa, that is so cool. You had a baby. Nice one. <laughs> anyway, let's age up little Milo and see what he looks like. All right, age up. Come on, everyone. Let's see. Oh, yay! Myler has aged up. Toddlers, day spate, spent, day spate, day spent playing with toys, exploring the world, and learning to communicate with words instead of tears. Oh, wait, this is the perfect time to start skill building for the future. All right, well, I'm going to give um, Myler the inquisitive trait, I think. Um, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, what? Milo has beautiful deep skin, blue eyes and blonde hair. What a gorgeous mix of both parents. Oh my gosh, he's such a handsome little boy and he has the new bowl cut. I'm so excited, you guys, that is so adorable. He does look very inquisitive as well. Um, what a handsome little boy. Oh my gosh, we have to take him, teach him to walk and do all of that good stuff. Oh my gosh, he's, I'm obsessed with him. He is so cute, little Milo, I love him. And I'm pretty sure Allison and um, Tanya would have made it very clear that um, 
it is not okay for Milo to, or Esther to see Milo's dad right now. That is just an absolute no, no. Uh oh, we need to take Sable to the vet as well. I did notice that. Um, and I think we should just have a little bit of like family time, like a little bit of time with Milo and Crystal and Milo and Joel, maybe talk to stranger and get to know Crystal a little bit. Oh, don't be sad. I think he's scared of Crystal. <laughs> And I think she's actually feeling a little unwell by the looks of things. Sad? Why are you sad? Stranger danger? Oh no, don't be sad. It's just like, Milo, that's Auntie Crystal. It's okay. Oh, and he's over it now. That, 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 that was quick. Tanya's having a little, little chat to little Milo there. Little Milo's running around. Very inquisitive indeed. Oh, it's so cute. Oh, getting up on the chair. I just can never get over toddlers. They're just so adorable. Isn't he just so cute? He has an amazing combination of both parents. That's crazy. And why is he feeling dazed? Food coma. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. All right, you guys. Well, I think I'm going to finish off this part right here. Um, let me know in the comments down below what you think of little Milo. Uh, do give this video a thumbs up for Milo. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this part. And I hope you're having a lovely morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever you are in the world. I will speak to you soon.